Okay, so number four, I went through the whole process of converting. Like I went from liters to milliliters, from milliliters to grams, from grams to moles, and moles, right. and then, then like back to grams, and I, I got, got 40. I wasn't sure how to write the equation. Is it, C, is it like CL to CL is what it's for? No, it's, it's not. It's so this is the equation, right? Yeah. And we just need to balance it. How did you know that, like that would just be like what? I don't know why I thought to do like CL plus CL. Oh uh, well, that really is what I have because what what how how would we balance this? What should this coefficient be? Two. Which means CL plus CL, doesn't okay. it? So you're right. It is CL plus CL. Uh, we can write it like this because we would combine terms. All right, and then we can make our famous start change end table. Oh, uh, you use the start change end. We're starting with ten liters of this, and presumably none of this, uh, we can assume this is going to go to completion. So if we're using up, I should put in the units, if we're using up 10 liters of this, how many liters of this are we producing? 10. No, no, 5. Yeah, maybe we should do that on paper. 5. No, that, that's right, it will be 5. But how would we do that conversion on paper? How did you get 5? Because it's 2, for every 2 is 1. Uh -huh. That's why we had to balance the equation. Let's do that as a formal unit conversion. If I want to go from 10 liters of cl atomic chlorine to, 10, uh, to liters of diatomic chlorine, what units do I need on the top and the bottom here? Um, Two. Um, oh, units? 10 uh, liters of Cl and for every, there's one Cl2 for every, there's one liter of CL2 for every two liters of CL. That's right. So, to start with the units, you start with chlorine down here because you want to cancel the chlorine up here. And then, where do we get these numbers from? From the stoichiometric coefficients. You might have seen a couple of examples of this on the previous midterms. The purpose of the stoichiometric coefficients is to give you conversion ratios. The yeah. purpose of the stoichiometric coefficients is to give you conversion ratios. And this tells us that we should do 10 divided by 2 which gives us five liters. You should be able to do that in your head as well, though, because we can see that we're only making um, half as many of these as we're using up of these. So it should be 10 divided by two, but this is the formal way to do that. Now, normally when we work with these tables, the safest thing is to work with moles. I think you were doing the conversion where you converted everything into moles. You could do that, but um, that should give you the same answer unless you make a mistake. Um, so it's faster to do this way. Why can we work with liters here? Because for an ideal gas, one liter of one ideal gas is the same number of moles as one liter of any other ideal gas. All ideal gases have the same proportion with moles. Um, so there's no point converting um, into moles because if you convert this into moles and then you convert the moles of chlorine into liters, those two conversion ratios will just cancel each other out. Uh, for example, we know that there's 22.4 liters in one mole at STP. Um, so if you use the 22.4 liters to convert this, it'll just cancel out when you use the 22.4 liters to convert this. It's a little tricky here because they didn't say it was at STP, so you wouldn't really know what the yeah. conversion ratio should be. Or they be. didn't say it was an ideal gas. Ah, well we have to assume it's ideal or we can't solve the problem. Okay. If, if you don't assume it's an ideal gas, then we can't assume that every two liters of this produces one liter of this. You're, you're meant to assume on gas problems that they're ideal gases unless there's a good reason otherwise. They're not always going to tell you that. But you should assume that gas problems are ideal gas problems unless they give you a reason not to. Okay. Okay. Um, you want me to see what went wrong with your approach? Or? No, it's good. Okay. All right. Um, how do I know to use a start change end table here? Well, for one thing, um, if you're having trouble, try to use a start change end table and maybe it'll help you. And they gave me the starting amount here and the start change end table helps us. Now, the key mistake people make is they just copy the numbers without thinking. For example, just because this is 10 doesn't mean this is 10. You have to use the stoichiometric coefficients to figure out what the changes are. Okay. Um, the stoichiometric coefficients give us the changes. Okay.